Yeah, we back. Now, today, man, we're going to be talking to Six the Goddess. Now, y'all been getting into the comment section. Y'all been hitting my email. Y'all been getting into my Instagram DMs. And you've been saying, man, Nefakara, you got to get at Six the Goddess, man. She's talking crazy. You got to get at Six the Goddess. I think it was sometime last week. I put out a video reacting to a piece of her content. Take a look up on the screen. It was a video entitled Miserable Woman vs. Beautiful Woman. Now, at that time, I didn't really know too much about Six the Goddess, man. Y'all remember I put that video out way back entitled Take a look up on the screen. The reason why black men stay away from Afrocentric black women. Listen, when I see when I see those those head wraps and the aesthetics and the pro black and I'm, I'm so pro black banging on my chest, I stay away because I know a lot of y'all run a game and I ain't about to be bamboozled by the bullshit. So I never really got into her content. But last week when I put up that video reacting to her content, a lot of y'all jumped into the comment section and y'all was like, Nefakari, why you reacting to her video? Bro, she be talking crazy. She be talking bullshit. She said this. She said that. She said this. And I was confused. I was like, wait, what she say? Like, I don't, I don't be watching her shit, bro. I saw one video. I thought it was cool. I reacted. I, I don't be watching these women. But due to the fact that so many of you guys came into the comment section and was telling me, man, she bogus. I was like, bet. Say no more. But anyways, man, I seen this video. I forget who sent it to me, whether in my email or my Instagram DM. And I'm going to let it play and I'm going to come back with my commentary. Let's go. So we the please, Pearly. Get your get your Africans on it. What them Africans over there like? These more they fuckers got me fucked up. They want to ruin my job. I am not going back to the villages in Nigeria. I'm not going back there where I only have electricity from noon to 6 p.m. It's not happening. If these niggas think for a second that I am going to turn against my white mommy, she gave me the best job I ever had in my life. I am able to send back money and supplies to my family for Igusi macro and fufu. I'll be damned. We are now, we will not sleep, pasty, until we get revenge on these niggas. All y'all go to hell, period. Y'all over there, boy, y'all so scared to go back to your hut and your fufu that y'all over here, oh, these more they focus. Oh, these more they focus. They want me to go against my white mommy. No, I finally have electricity for 20 hours a day. I All right, we back. Now, listen, this video is going to be a little different, man. Y'all remember I put out them classy videos. You know what I'm saying? We rode down on the black manosphere. You know what I'm saying? We we sent shots at Tarina Sheed. You know, we crushed Jason Black twice in a row. You know what I mean? But... I'm not going to approach it because she's a woman, right? And in real life, bro, I don't really be going back and forth with women, bro. If a woman say some goofy shit in real life, bro, I'm not even going to respond to your text. I might block your dumbass. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not about to be going back and forth with a woman. I don't do that shit in real life. I'm not about to do it on the digital streets, bro. So anyways, let's get into it. I'm going to approach this situation from a calculated and an intellectual position, right? I'm not about to pull out the flamethrower like how I did on Tarina Sheed or Jason Black and Philip Scott. Nah, I'm not going to do that, man. I'm not going to pull out the I'm not going to pull out the flamethrower. I'm going to just pull out the sword and I'm going to slice her intellectually. Now, the reason why you don't go back and forth with a woman on any topic and you never really step out your body is because what she's saying today you might come back in three weeks and she's gonna be saying something totally different something totally opposed to what she said three weeks ago bro so you never really want to go back and forth because women they go through phases they go through changes next year she's gonna be going through a different phase 10 years from now she's gonna be somebody else listen don't get caught up in the bullshit that be coming out their mouth bro Half the time, they don't even know what the fuck they even be saying. They just be saying shit. At that specific moment, she might be going through a certain emotion. And then next week, she might come to you and be like, man, all that bullshit I said, I didn't even mean it. I'm sorry. So, bro, you don't get caught up in the bullshit they be saying. Now, let's examine Six the Goddess. Like I said before, I don't know too much about her. Never really watched too much of her content. I just know she's a black woman. She looks good. And that's all I know. But before she became the Six the Goddess that we know today, she had a podcast years back, a couple years ago. It was entitled African in America. Now, if you look on the screen, you see Six the Goddess podcast or a profile on Apple Music, Apple Podcasts. It says, welcome to the newly rebranded Six the Goddess podcast. But if you go back, the last time they had an episode was November 17th, 2022. They were talking about Kanye and Kyrie. And before that, it was May 5th, 2021. And as you see the description, it says, this week on African and American, we are discussing the new wave of blah, 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 blah. And if you go to her profile on Apple Podcasts, you'll see that the podcast was originally called African in America or some shit like that. And every single week it says this week on African in America, this week on African in America. And then it stopped on May 2021 and it came back towards the end of 2022 with the newly rebranded Six the Goddess podcast, no longer called African in American. So first of all, like I said, today we're going to talk about being a product of your environment and the reason why you don't go back and forth with women, bro. I'm telling you right now, like I said, in real life, if a woman says some dumbass shit to me, I'm blocking her dumb ass. I'm not about to go back and forth and debate with you. So this is not going to be like the videos I did against Tariq Nasheed or Jason Black or Philip Scott, where I really put out the flamethrower and I let it rip. I went scorched earth on them boys. It's not going to be, it's not going to be that type of party today. We're going to approach it a little differently, a more, a little more elegantly. You know what I mean? More intellectually. We're not going to go crazy and just, you know, shoot up the whole party. You know what I mean? So let's get into it. 
the reason why I went after Tariq Nasheed, Jason Black, and Philip Scott was because they positioned themselves to be thought leaders, intellectual thought leaders in the community. And as a man, your word is bond. As a man, you're supposed to operate with a sense of honor and integrity with every word you say and every action that you take. So when you say some bullshit as a man, I have the liberty to call you out based upon the things that you said in the past. But when it comes to women, their thoughts and opinions are way more fluid and they're way more subject to change. So that's why we never really hold them to the same standard, right? We're never going to crucify them for, you know, flip flopping and switching sides depending on the scenario or the situation a common theme that comes up in many of my videos is i always say people are a product of their environment their experiences their upbringing all of that shit comes together and it creates the person that you see standing in front of you and this is especially true for women their personality and the way they operate is heavily influenced based upon the environment that they find themselves in during that certain moment me personally i'm in my late 20s and i spoke about it in previous videos when i was coming out of high school when i was going into college in the early 2010s man the spirit of pan-africanism that is what was popping right jay-z dropped 444 rick ross was putting out songs talking about buy back the block featuring two chains Nas and damian marley putting out that joint album you had the government of ghana putting together the year of return you had the buy black movement everybody supporting black businesses that was the energy that i came upon back in the early 2010s when i was coming out of high school coming into college when i was first started getting money first got my first whip moving around doing my thing that was the energy in the atmosphere and that heavily influenced my mentality today and as we can see it obviously influenced six the goddess as well because she had the podcast african in america podcast walking around with the big head wraps i'm telling you bro the past decade i'm telling you the pan-africanist energy was heavy in the atmosphere bro the pan-africanist was running the streets it was a high level of consciousness circulating among our people from the young dudes like myself going all the way up to the elders man even jay-z had to put out 444 bro i'm telling you it was real and i already touched on this in the videos that i put out towards tarina sheet and jason black now over the past 36 months or so that entire that entire energy is dead ain't no more buy black movement ain't no more ain't no more 444 is coming out ain't no more pan-africanist energy ain't no more none of that there's a, there's a very low level of consciousness among the people now very low low level it's we've been dumbed down heavily over the past few years bro over the past 10 years everybody went from talking about kemet studying ancient egypt buying black supporting black business now bro we've been dumbed down heavily now we now we're making african now we're making jokes about african huts and poverty and shit like that i don't know what the fuck happened to black people niggas is dumb now <laughs> niggas is dumb as fuck now <laughs> telling you bro niggas is dumb as fuck that's why i don't even call myself pro black no more i just say listen i'm pro intelligence i'm pro black men becoming powerful in the arena of economics and politics i'm pro black people becoming empowered black people being self-sufficient independent whatever that is that's what i am i'm not calling myself pro black because now we got people like tarina she calling himself pro black when we all know he is certified clown we got women like six the god is talking about they pro black when she's she making jokes about african huts and electricity and shit like that so if that's pro black in the modern day in 2023 listen it's very different from the pro black back in 2013 if the modern day pro black has transformed into making jokes about electricity levels in africa i'm not pro black fuck that shit nigga i'm something else you know what i'm saying i'm something else i ain't with that shit <laughs> i ain't with none of that they can have it i don't want it i call myself something else i'm pro intelligence i'm pro self-sufficiency i'm pro self-reliance i'm pro becoming empowered for your people that's what i am fuck that pro black shit nigga pro black y'all killed that shit but going back to what i said about everybody being a product of their environment listen six the goddess she just regurgitating shit she parroting shit whatever she said that's the same thing tarina she said she just repeating a comedy skit from tarina she bro she just a product of her environment she just responded to the environment come back in two years she gonna have a brand new persona talking about some whole different shit I'm telling you, bro, it's how it, bro, I got five sisters, bro. I got five sisters. I understand the psychology behind our women. That's why you never jump out the window when it comes to something that they say. Because a lot of times, like I said, they just be saying shit. They just be talking. And a lot of times, if you take what they say too seriously, they're going to look at you crazy. Like, damn, why this dude taking me so seriously? I'm just talking some bullshit right now. I'm just, I'm just saying shit. He taking me serious right now. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you. Now, we all know everybody is a product of their environment. But this holds especially true for women because they don't have the ability to physically change the environment in their image, in their liking, the same way that men can. So even though men are also a product of our environment, we can literally change the environment around us in our image. This is why men wage war. This is why men go to war. This is why men build big buildings and infrastructure and build societies because we can literally change the environment around us. Everything you see around you was once a figment of somebody's imagination, which came to reality. And due to the fact that women do not have the same amount of brute force that a man has to physically change her environment in her image, women have become very skilled over time in being able to adopt or adapt to any personality necessary to operate in any environment that you place them in. Drop her in a different environment, you're gonna get a different person, a different persona, a different personality, a different result. And that goes back to some of my commentary that I delivered during that whole fiasco surrounding the passport bros. I said the same thing women across the world they're pretty much the same they got the same desires the same wants and dreams the same hopes and dreams shit like that 
it's just a different person is going to be produced in a different environment so that's why these dudes talking about they got to pack their bags to go to a different country because the women of that country were cultivated in a different way due to the society that they came up in but underneath the surface it's still a woman at the end of the day and she got the same hopes and dreams and desires as any other woman across the world just like men across the world underneath our cultural differences our different religious backgrounds men are men at the end of the day now six the guy that she claims to be pro-black but her lane on social media is she claims to be a femininity coach or a femininity influencer for black women things like that teaching these women how to you know be a mother and wife to find a husband and shit like that you know it's a lot of women running this running this scheme online bro a lot of women running this scam online teaching other women how to be women and i call it a scheme because you got women like sister goddess who haven't even been able to achieve the same exact thing they claim to be able to help other women achieve now i haven't watched her content but according to her biography according to her teachings you will be able to become a a feminine woman that will be a suitable wife and mother for a successful man and have a happy black family etc etc but when you run the background check you can quickly tell the person speaking has no qualification to speak Similar to Tariq Nasheed, who claims he got all the keys and the knowledge to help you succeed and become an empowered black man in society, when the only thing he's done was hop online and sell DVDs. Like, my nigga, what the fuck? You don't got nothing to offer me. And it's funny because when you look at the life story and the background of both Six the Goddess and Tariq Nasheed, you'll notice some, some glaring similarities. And I'm going to get into it in this video as well. And I'm also going to run some footage from a good brother named um, Nathan Daly. I think that's his name. He also offered some commentary on the situation. I'm going to play that towards the end of the video. But let's continue. Let's talk about Six the Goddess, man. Before she came to YouTube, before she hopped on social media, before she came to Instagram, listen, she was a stripper down south, man. Popping them cheeks for dollars, man. Yes. Way before all this pro-black femininity, coach femininity, scholar, all this BS, she was popping them cheeks, getting naked for a check. Now, in the footage that I'm going to play from the good brother Nathan Daly, according to him, he says that she has no qualification to speak because she came from a stripper background. She came from the streets and shit like that. So she has no place to speak on what it takes to become a, an effective mother and wife in society now in terms of being a wife and a mother i agree she got no place to speak but in terms of the art of seduction as a woman who was in a strip club i believe she might have some she might have some knowledge to give to the people but apart from that anything outside of that box is way above her pay grade and when you see somebody like six the goddess a grown woman talking a whole bunch of ignorant bullshit talking about african huts and ele electricity in africa you got to look back at her environment what was she raised under who raised her how did she end up in a damn strip club in her early 20s and a single mother on youtube trying to monetize femininity you got to go to the family tree you got to go to the bloodline and from what i can gather from what i can assess in my opinion six the goddess does not come from a family tree of men who are high achieving men who are competent men who are able to provide opportunities and blessings to the women in their family because if her father was truly a competent man an intellectual man an intelligent man a competitive man he would be able to put his daughter in a position to where going to the strip club wouldn't even be an option that wouldn't even be a thought inside of her head because her father would already have everything set up for her to succeed would already put her on a runway to success at an early age but unfortunately for her due to whatever upbringing she came up under she was not given those blessings and i placed the blame at the feet of her father because as a man when i see a woman out in the strip club out in the streets out in the underworld just moving around by herself no protection no covering I already know the men in your family wasn't worth shit. The same thing I told Tarina Sheet in that one video last week. Tarina Sheet talks about how he dropped out before he went into high school. I said, bro, I would never be able to be allowed to drop out of high school because my parents would never allow me to do that shit because they love me. They cared about me. They would never let me to, they would never let me abandon school. But due to the fact that Tarina Sheet came from a family tree of people who wasn't shit, his daddy wasn't shit, his mama wasn't shit. They didn't give a fuck about their son and they let him drop out of school in the eighth grade just like six the goddess her pops didn't give a fuck about her her mom didn't give a fuck about her and even if they did they didn't have anything in place for her when she came of age and became an adult to give her an opportunity to succeed in life so she had to go to the strip club and clap them cheeks for dollars it is what it is by the time i was 16 17 i was already working in the family business my younger sisters the same thing they work in part-time while they go to school they don't got to go to no strip club bro and even if they were not working for the family business we could just give them money we could just give them money just to spend just to have it in their pocket bro it ain't shit so what you'll notice especially on this pro-black sector on youtube that whole entire sector it's full of people who come from shady backgrounds a bunch of people who are high school dropouts felons strippers low-level hustlers grifters con men you got people in that sector who went to federal prison for fraud a whole bunch of crazy shit bro that's why i don't be i don't be saying i'm pro-black bro i'm pro-intelligence i'm pro something else man i'm pro empowerment pro self-sufficiency i'm pro self-reliance i'm pro black men becoming powerful in the arena of economics and politics whatever that is that's what i am i don't call myself pro-black y'all can have that shit too many goofies and weirdos on that sector of youtube and it's so funny because I put out a video going at Jason Black because I knew he was clout chasing surrounding the whole just pearly thing situation. And Six the Goddess, it was no different. You know, she was so offended. She was so offended by what uh, just pearly things had to say. But meanwhile, she's talking about African huts and electricity in Africa and shit like that. Man, get your sit your goofy ass down. Man. That's why you don't take these folks serious on that on that pro black sector, man. They just be saying shit. 
They just be saying shit and hope that their audience is stupid enough to play along with them. Because ain't no intelligent black person gonna sit back and be like, okay, you got a problem with just pearly things. Okay, cool, I'm with you. But then you're making jokes about African huts and, and starving African children and no electricity and, and shit like that. Okay, well, what the fuck? What's the difference between you and her? I just see two goofy ass bitches. You got a goofy white chick and you got a goofy black woman over here with her head wrap acting like she she an Egyptian queen talking about I'm Nefertari Jr. She call herself Nefertari. Now you know my name is Nefertari. That's that's the masculine version. She call herself Nefertari, but she talking about oh yeah the, the starving Africans and they're Nigerian African huts. Like my nigga, like bro, th this that sector, that pro black sector is just a bunch of goofball. It's a, it's a circus. It's a clown show over there. It's for clowns. It's for clowns. It's for the low intelligence among them. That's all it is. It's not for any intellectual black person. That's why you never see any intellectual over there, bro. You never gonna see any farm D's, any JD any PhDs up in that pro-black sector of YouTube talking to motherfuckers like Tariq Nasheed or Six the Goddess. You're going to see a bunch of low-level motherfucking felony on their record, ex-strippers, ex-pimps, ex-drug dealers, ex-con men, ex-motherfucking scammers. That's what you're going to see in the pro-black sector of YouTube. A bunch of weirdos. A bunch of weirdos who, if they didn't have YouTube, if they didn't have social media, they'd be on the streets on some low-level con man shit or on some criminality shit. Or in the case of Six the Goddess, she'd probably still be in a strip club and selling ass to white men on the side. Because, you know, man, the, the black women in the line of sex work, we know y'all be selling y'all be selling coochie to white men 100 miles per hour. So we already know how y'all get down, man. So stop all this pro-black shit when you was probably in a strip club letting white men smack on your ass for dollars. So get the fuck out of here with this Egyptian queen head wrap walking around pro-black miss. Shut the fuck up with that dumb shit, man. That's why, man, listen, y'all boys gonna get fooled by that shit, but not me, bro. Not me. I, I don't get fooled by the exterior. I don't get fooled by the outer persona. I see right through that bullshit. And that's why I made that video months back. And I said, the reason why black men stay away from Afrocentric black women. That's why I never watch any of her content. That's why when y'all came into the comment section, it was like, Nifa Kari, she be talking crazy. She be talking crazy. I was like, yo, I don't even know what you're talking about, bro. I don't be watching her content. I just seen one video. But as far as Six the Goddess goes, I'm not going to waste too much time, man. Listen, she wasn't born into the best situation. As you can see, she most likely doesn't come from a bloodline of high achieving men. But she somehow believes she got the credibility to give women the knowledge necessary in order to be a decent mother and wife to a high achieving man. When her father was probably a bum ass nigga. Because what other way does your daughter end up selling her ass for money? When I see a woman engaged in the line of sex work, immediately what comes to my head is, damn, your father must be a bum ass nigga, bro. He must be, he must be incompetent. He must not be competitive. He must be intellectually deficient. He must be a bum. He must have no money. He must be broke. Because before my sister ever has to go to the damn strip club to pay her bills, bro, I'll just cash up her the money that she need, bro. If, if it's that bad, sis, if it's that bad, you need, you about to go to the strip club, listen. What you need, what you need on the cash app? I'll send it to you right now. I'll send it to you right now. But I don't got to do that because she works for my father in the family business. You see, when you're a man of, of competence, when you're a man who actually gives a fuck about the women in your family, you're going you're gonna to have this shit set up for them. You're going to put them in the best position possible so they don't got to go down to the club and let a bunch of drunk degenerate men touch all over their body for dollar bills. It's not going to happen. But luckily for Six the Goddess, due to the fact that a bunch of women in the United States apparently do not know how to be a woman, she found a lane online on social media as an influencer teaching women femininity. Similar to Tariq Nasheed. It didn't work out for him in the rap game. It didn't work out for him in the acting game. So he found a lane online, selling DVDs, grifting DVDs, putting a bunch of documentaries together. And he found a way to feed his family. Based on the fact that a bunch of black people in the United States don't know shit about history. So when you take a look at these guys, you see they're capitalizing on the fact that so many of our people are incompetent in areas that are basic. A woman like Six the Goddess shouldn't exist because women should naturally already know how to be a decent wife and mother to find a decent husband. That should be second nature to a woman. You've already understood this for thousands of years, but apparently y'all forgot it in the modern day. A man like Tarina Sheed shouldn't exist because the passing down of cultural history and family values should already be done by your mother and father you shouldn't have to come online and buy dvds from this low-level hustler who dropped out in the eighth grade to tell you about your history as a black man you should already know that in fact there should already be centers of learning in universities where this curriculum is taught to the students starting from a very young age where a guy like Tariq Nasheed shouldn't even be necessary but due to the fact that parents are not doing their job the children have to go online and look and look up to these internet daddies like Tariq Nasheed to find some sense of identity and belonging and even six the goddess fell victim to that herself because she's regurgitating his his same old bullshit talking points his same old bullshit weak ass jokes because she herself is finding her identity in his talking points finding her identity in his propaganda because like i said she most likely didn't get it from her family because judging from her life story she comes from a bloodline of men who are incompetent low achieving and non-competitive and did not set up a lane for success for their daughters to succeed in life so she has to go to the damn streets and the damn strip club to build a foundation for herself a foundation that should have already been built by her father and her mother so now she gotta hop on youtube and pass the collection plate around and beg for donations and shit like that to feed her goddamn kids when if she really was the supreme feminine woman that she claimed to be she would already have a husband a man getting up at the same time and going to sleep at the same time every night paying the bills and handling his business but apparently you're really not the woman that you claim to be because you done had what two 
kids, one kid, and you ain't even stick around. And for a woman to look that good and to not have no man stick around, that's how I know you ain't shit. That's how I know you ain't shit because, man, we don't even divorce women like that. I think, what, men divorce women 20% of the time, women divorce majority of the time. So for the man to not stick around and you look this damn good, I know you ain't shit. <laughs> I know you ain't shit. Underneath the surface, below all that fake pro-black Afrocentric head wrap bullshit, man, listen, man, you just the same old, you just a goofy bitch. And before I jump into the commentary by the good brother Nathan Daly, I just want to say this, man. I'm not going to hit it with the intellectual facts, the historical facts like I did to read the Jason Black philip scott i'm not gonna hit it with that because she never claimed to be an intellectual thought leader bro you just when it comes to goofy chicks like this man you just you just point at them and just be like man you just goofy man like ain't nobody about to listen to that dumb ass shit man because when you acknowledge the dumb shit that they be talking about you give it credibility the way you don't acknowledge when a woman says some dumb shit is you just ignore it bro you act like she don't even exist you be like man i'm not gonna acknowledge that dumb shit that's how they know that's how they know they talking dumb shit that's why when y'all was hit me to get into my dms and talking about you gotta get at six to god or something like man i don't even get at chicks in real life when a chick talking goofy bro i just delete their number i just block their number i just block them off social media bro i don't be going back and forth i realize you goofy and that's all i need to see i ain't going back and forth because like i said earlier women go through different changes different phases Man, they go through different emotions in life. That's why a couple years ago, she was talking about, I'm an African in America. Now she's talking about, oh, I'm FBA. Oh, them Africans in them huts and no electricity. Bro, they just be going through different shit. I've seen women go from being pro-black to dating white boys. From dating white boys to becoming super pro-black. To go from being pro-black to becoming a divester who hates black men. Bro, women go through so many phases and different changes. That's why you do not take them serious. Come back in a year, she's going to be singing a whole different song. Come back in five years, it's going to be a whole different person. Come back in 10 years, you're not even going to recognize them no more i even notice it with the women that i deal with i could meet a chick and she's just a regular chick when we first meet then she get around me start hanging around me start seeing the books that i read start seeing the content that i watch and that shit starts rubbing off on her and she starts adopting some of my talking points some of my personality traits start rubbing off on her next thing you know by the time she finished dealing with me she become a whole new person she a whole new person from the time she met me simply from being around me that's why in this video i didn't go too hard man i didn't go too hard man i'm not gonna i'm not gonna come here and try to drop a whole bunch of historical facts and try to debunk her intellectually like i did philip scott to read the sheet and all them boys it is what it is bro she probably don't even believe the bullshit that she's saying bro that's how i feel about it the same way she went from calling herself an african in america with the head wrap to going from fba she gonna go from fba to something else in a couple years my nigga don't take it serious don't jump out your body don't jump out the window I believe she lives somewhere in Atlanta. Bro, let her run into a young brother, a young fly brother getting money, a young Pan-African brother, and I guarantee the entire persona gonna change. The entire demeanor gonna change because I've watched it happen with women that I deal with. They get around me, just a regular chick. Now all of a sudden she a big Pan-Africanist. Now she wanna go to Kenya with me. Now she wanna go to Senegal with me. Now she wanna go to South Africa with me. But if you go back to when we first met, she didn't give a fuck about none of that shit. But it goes back to what I said. Women are a product of their environment. So she's been sitting around this FBA bullshit, all this FBA talking points. Now she regurgitating the jokes and shit like that. It is what it is. Let her get around a different environment amongst a, a different crop of men. She gonna be, she gonna adjust to that environment. So that's why I don't take it serious, bro. Don't take it serious because half the time, women ain't even taking themselves serious, bro. They ain't even taking themselves serious. So what we look like getting emotional over some dumb shit that she said. Now, of course, when it comes to guys like Tariq Nasheed, Philip Scott, Jason Black, etc., etc., you know, we're going we gonna to take them to task because as men, we're supposed to confront other men. But when it comes to these women, man, listen, bro, put them up to the side. They just be talking shit, man. They just, they just be saying shit. Now, anyways, bro, we're going to jump into this commentary by the good brother, Nathan Daly. He's going to give some, you know, his own position on the situation. And then uh, from there, we're going to be out. Let's go. We're going to talk about Chelsea Nelson, a.k.a. Six the Goddess. Who is she? You guys, she a reformed stripper trying to teach black women how to be feminine. Fair use. This is for educational purpose. This is her. And this is her just four years ago. This is what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. You know, what's even more interesting. It gets worse when you have a person who feels comfortable selling their body for attention selling their body for validation, needing the money of men, and then want to turn around and tell women how to be feminine. This is your queen. Would you let a stripper teach your daughter, black women, how to be feminine, how to be respectful? You guys, there's nothing feminine about her. What does she do? She sells her image. She sells her activities for payment, for financial gain. And this is our black representation of femininity. No, you guys, this is performative femininity. This is a business. This is the new trend using and selling sex, sex sales, right? You're, you're, you're selling sexuality. You're turning yourself to a sexual symbol to make money. 
You guys, this is no disrespect to her. That's what she wants to participate in. I'm simply just highlighting the hypocrisy. She prides herself in being this elegant woman of femininity, teaching other black women how to get husbands, what they need to do, how to conduct themselves, how to talk to men. I think one of the biggest challenges overall is that people have turned this into a business, business of deceiving. And unfortunately, men are the biggest supporters of it. If you have an issue with what you are seeing, if you have an issue with these so-called uh, hypocritical women and using their image and their body to rob men willingly, don't support it. Men are the biggest supporters of this type of hypocrisy. We're talking about having real conversations about what things need to be changed. She said it herself, women have become hypersexualized, but then you yourself create hypersexual content. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. I think one of the things that I find most interesting is that what next? What next? Should she be allowed to be a feminine coach? Should she be teaching black women on what it means to be feminine? He, she herself is not feminine, right? Does she tell people that, hey, you guys, uh, I, I was a stripper. Hey, you guys, I don't really believe in any things that I'm saying. I'm actually doing it to make money. Hey, you guys, guess what? I don't really believe in any of that stuff. Hey, I'm really not pro-black. It just sounds good. I just want to be a part of this thing because I see it's garnering me money you guys i said it earlier you cannot trust a harlot why because they care about money do you know the, the 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 psychosis of a person in order to get on a stage and remove your clothes and to be touched by multiple people for a dollar bill you guys this is just a couple years ago you guys she came on youtube just two years ago so you done switched it up that quick, huh? She's so proud of that height. Yeah, she is. Six footer. This is your queen. This is your feminine coach. A woman who dances for dollars, who sells her body for money. Going online, teaching or telling black women how to be a lady, a lady. She doesn't care, you guys. You know what she cares about? She doesn't care about white supremacy. She cares about green supremacy. You guys, this isn't to make fun of her, right? Being a stripper is hard work. It's not easy. Can you imagine? Every night you go to work, you have to degrade yourself. You have to take your clothes off in front of strangers. You have to let them touch you. You have to let them put money between your legs and private places and inappropriate places. You have to open your legs up. You have to seduce people to survive. This is who we're talking about. The stripper turned streamer, master of seduction. So Six was known for being one of the wildest ones in the bunch. Always willing to do a little something strange for some change, you guys. Reincarnated, I'm back in original fashion. I left on a horse and came back in that ass. And I left with abundance and came at the famine. We used to be pyramids, now we be rapping. Look how the mighty have fallen. Used to be running, now we be walking. When you be cooning, that's when they applauded. Selling your soul, your sons and your daughter. Gotta come up in this shit. They stuck in the mix. Really, my heart would be breaking. That's why I'm stacking that paper and handle my business. Pass it down in generation. Talking about money and power and building a nation. That's a deadly combination. Never be watching the TV. They pushing the genus. Falsifying information. Know they got malice intentions. Step in the room and I'm feeling the tension. Enemy watching me blocking my vision. Pay for the check cause I need my redemption. Building my kingdom. I need to protect it. Ready for war like a young money Congo. Never decided the team is the motto. Up in the crib and I'm whipping up waffles. Up in the crib and I'm smoking gelato. I'm chilling. I'm taking my pain and make it ambition. I'm blessed by the gods but I ain't religious. I came for the power. They came for the bitch. They making no hourly wage. I got business. This shit is an art. 
and they could never be taught. Selling my soul, I can never be bought. Play with my money, I see you ain't caught. Run to the check and I do it for sport. Babylon falling, I go to the source. Packing my luggage and go overseas. Shorty be with me and she so at least. Shorty be chugged and I'm calling her Hershey. Secret intelligence probably gon' murder me. Don't fuck with brands, cause nigga, I'm Haitian. Say the wrong shit and you're smacking their faces.